Welcome back to the bench. I guess, as Curious Mark would say, if you're following the channel, you'll know we've been working on the Pico Keyer 2 from 2005. This is episode 3, where we're about to give it a shot and see if it works. Um, I have no idea how lucky that will be, but we'll see. So, still left in my box of parts here, we have uh, this. So that's our Pico Keyer, a 12F683. We're gonna see how that fits in the socket. And then we're gonna see if the, uh, what could be a 20 year old battery is any good. That was in the bag also. So I'll zoom back here. I'm gonna take this chip, which is uh, kind of bent and splayed out and bend it a little bit flat against the board here so it should go in the socket and then maybe a little bit of TLC that looks pretty good maybe a little TLC with the pliers but we'll see so the notch <coughs> is on the left and the notch on the board is on the right so we'll turn that around and put it in And I don't think we need to connect anything else. We have, uh, okay, inspection. All leads are down the holes. We have this jack marked key and this jack marked rig. And we have a speaker on board, which is probably a piezo, which will probably be somewhat annoying, but we'll try it. Then uh, I haven't decided, but since the top is labeled with the silk screen and the bottom isn't. I think I'm gonna put <clears throat> the battery on the bottom so that I can still read the silk screen and in a pinch I can solder to the top if I decide to use that. I did straighten a few pins on this so they're still a little ravaged but they, uh, I bet they'll fit. So we're gonna put that in the board from the bottom and by the way, I have the uh, the power to the bench is connected to the light switches, and uh, that means my soldering iron got left on most of today, probably about, uh, oh, I don't know what, 10 hours worth, which wasn't perfect. And uh, the Hako also got left on, and if you guys have been following, you know that that's the Japanese version. But <clears throat> after 10 hours, it was still on and hot. So <clears throat> apparently I haven't burned it up yet. So we're going to solder in the battery holder here. But by the way, the handle on my Weller is uh, getting hot after being on for 10 hours. And you can see the tip isn't great. I tried to clean it a little. We'll try to tin it a little bit before we uh, use it again here. And then we'll try that battery connector again. All right, so we got that. And then we'll try the other one. And somebody commented about me using this vise. Apparently, I'm now not the only one doing it. Um, you can see mine is pretty old and beat up, but it's... Uh, still humming along and I guess I can't justify changing it just because it's ugly so I'm going to keep it and uh, it is better than the ones that I've tried that grab onto the sides of the board because they never seem to fit especially after you put components on the board so there's always seems to be a little corner you can grab onto with the vise so I've been doing that and having good fun with it all right, now we're going to check and see if our 20-year-old battery has any life. So we'll zoom back again and we'll take a look at the, uh, the Klein, which wakes up on AC. And we'll get it to DC. And we'll uncover the what looks to be ravaged battery. <laughs> And we will, uh, let's see, I think we can get probes in here. 
that's pretty good. 3.3 for a 20 year old battery or at least whenever that kit was shipped. So we're going to try it. It's a Panasonic and uh, it's still stuck in there. So I think we're going to guess it's the original. Now, who's to say what'll happen if it'll, <laughs> if it'll beep or smoke or do nothing? But it looks like the way those edges are that, uh, oh, here's plus over here. So plus would be under the hook. Wow, did you guys hear that? It did wake up and send some code. Let's do that again. See if anybody can catch what it was. That doesn't come up very easy. I guess that's good. Let me get the screwdriver. I think that's the right thing, is just to pry it up. Yep. All right, I'm going to try to put this by the mic, and you guys see if you can get whatever it sends. I think I only heard a single beep that time. So maybe it has to be off longer. But we'll save that experiment for a, another moment. So the only thing left in the box, we'll put them on just for completeness, is these little knurled nuts. Because I think after this, the, uh, the parts box can be put aside. And this will be quite a change, even with... Uh, 20-year-old technology, I'm looking at the MFJ Deluxe Electronic Keyer, which uses a 9-volt battery. It seems to run down <laughs> in a day if I forget to turn it off when I leave it. All right, so uh, all the buckets are empty except for the refuse, so I think we've made it. Yep. All right, so we're putting that aside, and now we're going to try to plug in the key, which I think is over here, and that would be into the key jack. And it did beep again, but it's pretty quiet. So I'll put this close to you. And it comes up that what that must be, uh, what, 10 or 12 words per minute by default. Oops. So other than I can't send my own call, I think it seems to work. So the next thing we're going to do is, I think in the next video, I'm going to get out a QRP rig and we're going to see if it will key the rig. And if it will, then I'm going to find, uh, I think, I think I actually have that in the manual. I think I remember some. So here is the header information if it's the same. So we do have a JP1, and it has seven pins. So we have paddle input, output, so keying line, side tone audio. So I can power it from JP1. And uh, apparently V-reg isn't important, because that looks somewhat separate. There's a cap and I think a regulator, so you can feed it with power from non-onboard battery and then on another oh well, here's the quick reference so i think if i hit the button once it'll go into command mode and then we can set the various options which came up pretty nicely already um, let's see if i hit the button once and do a v if we get the firmware version Mm, nothing heard. So either I didn't do that right or uh, that wasn't it, but we'll check that out soon. So let's leave it at that. I'll uh, do a little experimenting, get a radio out, and we'll see if it keys it. And then I think we'll have completed the warm-up and we can get back onto that KAT2 project. So thanks for watching. See ya.